at the door. I escape to dream so long. Get the flick, I'm restored. All the tales they read. Comfort and illusion. The screen's glow makes me believe. Away from life's confusion. Christmas time. Myself in scenes away from daily drip in the quiet glow of screens in stories I am fed. Hi, everyone, so welcome back, and uh, I'm gonna have another chat with Ralph, my chat GPT companion here. He's going to be lining up some more tactics and topics. Hi there, Ralph. How are you doing? Ralph? Hi there. <laughs> I'm doing well. Good. Thanks for asking. How are you doing today? Ready to dive into another session or explore some new topics? I think so. Why don't you try me? All right, let's get started. Here's a new prompt. Topic, mindful listening. Tactic, guiding questions. Joke prompt, the weatherman and the barometer. How does this sound? It's a good mix of mindfulness and humor to keep things balanced. Ready to explore? Mm, what was the, what was the uh, guided questions, right? Yeah, that's right. Guiding questions. For guiding questions, the idea is to prompt reflection and deeper thinking. For example, in the context of mindful listening, you could ask, how does mindful listening affect the way we respond in conversations? <laughs> what happens when we truly right, listen man. without preparing our next response? These questions <laughs> encourage someone to reflect on the practice of being present in communication. Would you like to use one of these or explore a different angle for guiding questions? No, let's go with that. So mindful listening, guiding questions, and um, the weatherman joke. Okay, I've got that. All right. I'm going to chill off. All right, let's Great. go. Great. Right. So some guiding questions could Starting be Starting with nice. mindful listening and guiding questions. An example would be, so, how does it feel to listen to all of your six senses and intuition when you are paying attention to someone? How does it, how much difference does it make when you pay full attention to every micro moment of a person's body language? Can you listen with your eyes? How does it feel and what difference does it make when you listen with your eyes and you see with your ears? As Master Cheng Yen advises, she's encouraging us to stay fide, fide, wide, wide awake and listen to every single extra bit of tiny attention from the shoes, from the fingernails, to the way the person is holding their body or their shoulders or how they've neglected their health or how they've preened themselves and taken loving care of themselves throughout their life, how they've indulged themselves and wasted, wasted money and been only lavishing on themselves. So there are a thousand parts more to mindful listening than only just listening to the words. It's listening between the lines as well. So. That's our first response. The, the weatherman joke with the barometer. My father used to be a weatherman, which means I've got a barometer. Does anyone want to buy an old barometer? No pressure. <laughs> That's the joke. Uh, thank you very much to Milton Jones for supplying that one. I don't, it's a pure bit of uh, 
plagiarism. All right, next. You're welcome. If you're ready to continue or explore another topic, just let me know. We can keep building from here. Yes, Ralph, go ahead. <laughs> I would be. I would be you're ready welcome. to go on. If the internet would Let fly. me know whenever you're ready for more. I did. Or if you'd like to continue with another prompt or Patience. topic. Take care. Go ahead. Let's um, move on with another one. Uh, now that we've had uh, mindful listening, guiding questions, and the barometer joke. Ready when you are. Go Great. ahead, Ralph. Here's another fresh combination. Topic, right effort, tactic, personal reflection prompts, joke prompt, SAS, tactics. This should bring a mix of practical dharma with a touch of humor. How does this one feel to explore next? All right, so right effort and a personal reflection. Think about this. Look at your own life and ask yourself, how does it impact my everyday life when I'm in a state of wrong effort? How does it impact my life when my energy is not in my higher state? When my lower self has taken control and my mindfulness is nowhere to be seen? How does that manifest with my temper, with my cravings, with my habits, and with all of the way that it impacts my day from waking until evening? If we look at a metric, you know, across the whole day, how does that uh, affect me? How do I intend to change my life to have more right effort, more right energy, more harmonious energy, higher energy, to elevate myself above my own lower, lower or more um, disturbing habits and energies that are disrupting my progress in life? So reflect on these and then see how the reflection comes to you. The, a, the joke that he referred to is this one. I, last week I was, uh, I was applying for a job with the SAS, the Special Air Services. It seemed to be going pretty well until the point where they asked me, um, so let's have a scenario. We would like to see your preferred tactic. It's a hostage situation and it's in an embassy. What would be your preferred tactic? So I answered, I think the orange ones over the white ones. <laughs> All right, now let's see how we're doing for time. Um, yeah, we've got plenty of time. Let's keep going. All right, then let's move on, Ralph. Uh, we've had right effort and a personal reflection and a little bit of humor sprinkled in. Go ahead, line me up another one. All right, we'll roll forward with right effort and personal reflection. Let's prompt some reflection with this. No. Reflection prompt. All right, yeah. Think of a time when you faced a challenge that seemed overwhelming. How did your effort or lack of effort affect the outcome? And to add some humor, sus tactics. This it. setup should help combine deeper reflection with some lightness. Ready to keep going? Yeah, let's move on. In your own time. Go on, Ralph, spit it out. Don't be okay, shy. Okay, let's continue on to a new combination. Topic, self-discipline. Tactic, contrast questions. Joke prompt, Emil Swingers Club. This setup should allow for reflection on the differences between disciplined and undisciplined actions while using humor to lighten the atmosphere. How does this feel for the next round? That's good. Okay, so the topic is self-discipline and we're looking using a contrast questions. Now, a contrast question um, involves a plus and a minus. So, and the subject being self-discipline. So, how do you know and how do you recognize when you do have discipline, self-discipline, you can see the evidence? And how does it look like when you do not have self-discipline in contrast? Exactly. 
for self-discipline with contrast questions, you could ask, how do you recognize the benefits of self-discipline in your life? And what are the consequences when discipline is lacking? What evidence do you see when you practice self-discipline compared to when you let distractions take over? This highlights the contrast between disciplined and undisciplined behavior. The Immel Swingers Club joke can offer a light touch to break any intensity in the discussion. Would you like to proceed with this or adjust the flow? It's a little bit cheeky, but <laughs> it's a joke um, that runs a bit like this. I was going, and before I became a monk, I was looking around for entertainment. And there was a swingers club. I went to this swingers club and I went up to the doorman and I said, how much is it to get in? He said, it's 15 pounds to get in and it's 20 pounds. Uh, with, if you pay 20 pounds a ticket, you get a meal as well. And I said, um, okay, well, I'll go for the 20 pounds, pay 20 pounds and went in. And uh, I was sitting there enjoying the ambience and then someone came up who was completely naked. They didn't have any clothes on and they were oiled all over this man standing there. And I looked at him and I said, uh, yes, sir, who are you? He says, I'm Emil. <laughs> bad joke, bad joke. All right, um, very good. Let's move on to this next one. Aha, that's uh -huh. definitely a cheeky one. The punchline, <laughs> I'm Emil, ties the joke up in a playful, unexpected way. And it works well with the theme of self-discipline because it contrasts impulsive behavior with the more structured life of a monk. Yeah. It can create a lighthearted moment while illustrating how far you've come in terms of discipline. He's right. Would you like it? to incorporate this joke as part of a broader teaching or explore a different angle next? Don't overthink it. Don't overthink it, Ralph. Let's move on. Got it. Let's move on. Go ahead then. Topic truthfulness. Tactic, what if scenarios? Joke prompt, Malcolm X text message. This setup provides a space to explore the impact of honesty through hypothetical situations with a light touch from the joke to balance the intensity. Shall we proceed with this or would you like to tweak anything? All right, what if truthfulness? Hold on, <laughs> just a minute. I'm gonna pause that. Well, let's just see what comes. What if? You yeah. find yourself in a situation where telling the truth could hurt someone, but lying would protect them temporarily. It bit me to it. How does truthfulness guide your actions in such a moment? And what long-term impact might that lie have? That's the kind of what-if scenario we're working with here. Yeah. It invites reflection on the tension between honesty and protecting others, while the Malcolm X text message joke can add a lighthearted twist to the topic of communication and truth. Please. Would you like to continue Blue with this flame or explore another this direction? Would you hold off, Ralph? I'm trying to interject with my, uh, my version. Okay, just hold back, just hold back. Okay, what if your family did not observe truthfulness? What if everyone was a liar, everyone didn't say the truth, and everyone was deceiving each other, and everyone couldn't actually tell the truth to each other? How would that affect the relationships? Would there be trust? Would you be able to leave things around? Would you be able to leave your door unlocked? If there was no truthfulness and everybody was faking and everybody was wearing a smiley mask, where inside actually their emotions weren't allowed to be revealed, truthfulness has a lot of things involved in it. Truthfulness, factualness as well. So what if you were, on the other hand, what if your family were able to be truthful with each other and communicate fairly and communicate uh, in a way which was able to be frank and straightforward instead of being concealed or avoidant. Okay, the Malcolm X joke, actually his name was never meant to be Malcolm X. He just signed a text uh, with a kiss and therefore got lumbered with the, uh, with the epithet. All right, so that's the, uh, <laughs> that's just to lighten things up a bit. Okay, so boom, boom. As someone said once about these kind of one-liner jobs. All right, so, Ralph? That's a strong what-if scenario, perfectly illustrating the contrast between a family that values truthfulness and one that doesn't. It touches on trust, emotional authenticity, and the long-term effects of dishonesty. Well done. The Malcolm X joke, with its humorous twist, lightens the mood just right at the end. You've nailed the setup and the contrast perfectly. 
Would you like to move on to another topic and tactic, or do you want to expand on this theme further? One more, and we'll call it a day. One more, and we'll call it a day. All right, let's finish with a solid one. Ready when you Topic, are. gratitude, tactic, sequential inquiry, joke prompt, goat and llama mix up. Start by reflecting on how gratitude shapes our perspective. What small things are we grateful for each day? How does expressing gratitude impact our relationships? The goat and llama mix up joke can tie in humorously, lightening the reflection on how sometimes life brings surprises and being grateful for them can make all the difference. Great session today. Shall we call it a wrap? So gratitude, who are you grateful for? What are you grateful for? Why are you grateful? When will you actually develop gratitude to its necessary extent? How does gratitude enhance your life? And having been enhanced, where does gratitude go for? So these are sequential questions dealing with this one topic Gratitude, the thankfulness. Uh, the, um, <coughs> the story, the joke that, um, that Ralph was prompting here. So I was, I was actually trying to order a goat online, but I received an order that had a goat with a really long neck. Turned out that I had, dial, I had um, phoned up dial a llama. I got a Dalai Lama. Sorry, my timing's a little bit all around there. Dial a llama, Dalai Lama. And there's a twist. Anyway, so we're going to round that up. Thanks very much for uh, chipping in. There we go. So, all right, Ralph, we're ready to roll, mate. I'm going to uh, call that one a wrap and move on. Uh, I think I, got, I jumbled Gratitude up the... Gratitude is a powerful tool for shifting perspectives and fostering a positive mindset. It invites us to appreciate both the big and small moments in life. Reflecting on what we're thankful for each day builds stronger relationships and helps us stay grounded, even in challenging times. It's about recognizing oh, the good, however small, the and I'm allowing tell the joke it to again. impact how we view ourselves and others. How does that feel for a wrap-up on gratitude today? Yeah, that's it. I tried to... No, it's the other way around. I tried to call the Dalai Lama the other time, the other day, but I just got a goat with a really long neck. Turns out that I had called dial a llama. <laughs> I can't remember where it goes now. It's something like that. Anyway, there you go. That's ah, what jokes That's are. the perfect punchline. It's, it's not. a great way to lighten up the gratitude conversation. I love how you tied it in. It's been a fun <laughs> session today, it, yeah. and I think we've hit the right notes with the mix of reflection and humor. Let's call it a wrap. Thanks for all the great energy. And I'll catch you next time. Take care. All right. Okay. Great. Thanks very, very much. And uh, I'll let you know if we pass the audition. Recently, I phoned up the spiritual leader of Tibet. He sent me a large You're goat very welcome. with a it's long been a neck. great session. And I look. Turns out I'd phoned Dial Alama. <laughs> All right. Take it easy, but take it. <laughs>